Did you know there's a difference between the tribulation and the great tribulation? We're going to talk about that next. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled Seven Undeniable End Time Events. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're continuing our series on end time events. We've entitled this Seven Undeniable End Time Events. We're going to list them on the screen. We're now at number four, uh, the tribulation, and we've divided it into two sections, the first three and a half years and the second three and a half years, because the Bible does, and we'll explain that to you uh, as we go through this program. But the uh, seven end time events are events that almost all Bible scholars agree will happen. The disagreement is on their timing or the order. And so we teach them as separate events that you can order however you see fit. If you see it in a different way, it doesn't change the fact that there's going to be a second coming or that there's going to be a tribulation or that there's going to be a millennium. And uh, if you see it in a different order, you could just move those into a different place. But the, the contents of that event are still the same. And so we can teach them that way and, uh, and really cross a lot of, uh, of different fences and a lot of different beliefs as long as, you know, I, I'm just not that dogmatic about it. Because here's the thing about end time events. They're going to happen the way God decides they're going to happen, and we can't change that. And nothing we say or do is going to change it. So uh, I'm excited about watching these things unfold, and being informed about them is helpful because uh, things are lining up right now. Nations are lining up, prophecies being fulfilled, and the time of, uh, of Jesus' return is closer than it's ever been. So get the study notes. I've done a lot of work getting this organized for you, making it simple and streamlined. Uh, it's like one of those big end time books without all of the comments. Uh, we've just got the, the events and uh, the order and all the scripture references for you. And I think it would be a blessing to you. If you'd like to get this video series, we're doing 20 sessions on this. You can get it in USB format if you uh, call or order it from our website or you can download the, the audio and you can stream the video free of charge. That's in our free, uh, free download section in our product page on the website. So uh, take advantage of that. We're going to go through these, three, these seven vials or bowls of wrath and uh, it's going to get intense, but we're going to make it through and we're going to come out on the other side, I promise. Um, it, there's a few events that happen just before the vials or the final seven judgments are poured out, remember there were the seals that were opened, then there were the trumpets that were blown, the seven seals, seven trumpets, and now seven bowls. And uh, this begins the second half of the tribulation, which is called the Great Tribulation. So the events before the vials are poured out was Satan was defeated in the heavenlies and cast to the earth. So he's totally focused on planet earth, the people here. The 144,000 witnesses from the tribes of Israel are raptured and they rejoice in heaven in Revelation 14. And then angels are going to proclaim the gospel in Revelation 14. That's not happened before. That didn't happen in this dis dispensation and it won't happen until, um, until Revelation 14 when angels will preach the gospel. And one of the things that you see in the tribulation before you get the wrong idea about God, He has withheld His wrath and His judgment all these years, over 2,000 years. And even as His wrath is poured out on the earth because of sin and rebellious humanity, He's still doing it so that people would turn to Him. And I gave you my my salvation experience, I turned to God and it was just a little outburst of anger and, and repentance as, as a boy. It didn't take me half a tribulation to turn to God. It was just one event and my heart was broken and I accepted Jesus. M many, most of you watching uh, this program have had a similar experience. You got saved in this dispensation. You didn't need signs and, and, and wrath and you didn't need to have the devil scared out of you. 
But uh, people in the tribulation will be turning to God as these things are poured out, and it's because of the mercy of God. You know, God could have made this very anticlimactic, and he could say tomorrow, okay, it's over, and just stopped and sent everyone else to hell and brought the church to heaven and been done with it. But the fact that he, he's striving with people, with, with hard-hearted people, hard-headed people, to try to convince them, to me, the, the tribulation, the seven years of tribulation, is just a picture of God's desire to see humanity saved. Uh, there's no other reason to go through all this uh, other than giving people a chance a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. So uh, the second half of the tribulation begins with the opening of the vials, which we're going to go to, seven vials. Jesus even pointed out the difference between the tribulation and the great tribulation. Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel, this is Matthew 24, 15, when the vials are open, the Antichrist is going to enter the Jewish temple and say, I'm God. This is going to be at, at three and a half years. So in the beginning of the tribulation, the Antichrist will come to power and make a covenant with Israel, a peace treaty, and the world will be at peace, seemingly. At three, and then Israel's going to rebuild their temple and re-begin, re redo their sacrifices. They're going to renew their relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're going to worship Him in the Old Testament fashion. At three and a half years, the Antichrist is going to come into the temple and say, I'm God, worship me. He's going to require everyone, you know, to worship him. He's going to abolish the one world religion that he brought into power. He's going to enforce this, the mark of the beast, 666, and he's going to demand absolute worship. And uh, this will be the last half of the tribulation, which the Bible calls the Great Tribulation. So it's even worse than what we've covered up to now. In Revelation 15, we'll start there and we're going to run through these, these vials of wrath or bowls. A vial is a bowl. And um, it says in Revelation 15, When I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. So uh, this is the announcement of these, um, these seven bowls. We're going to skip to uh, chapter 16 and verse 1. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of wrath, of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first bowl was poured out upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Now at this point, I'm not sure that there's any hope for those people. Um, I, I think they've made their choice. The second bowl uh, was poured out. The angel poured out that bowl on the sea and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died. So, you know, when we... And this is what I would always refer to when, when, when you're dealing with people that are saying that God's judging the earth through a natural disaster, a tornado, or a hurricane, or an earthquake, and they say it's an act of God, and God was judging New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina. People actually said that. Preachers actually said that. My response has always been, when God judges the world, you won't have to ask, was it God? You won't have to wonder. This becomes crystal clear that, that God is doing this, and, and there's no doubt. He's not hiding behind it. He's not hiding behind religion. Uh, he's full force pouring out His wrath on the earth, and there's no question that this is God. I mean, uh, he, he poured out this second bowl, and the entire sea became blood. Every creature in the sea died. Man, that's different than a flood flooding out businesses and homes in certain neighborhoods. It's not even in the same category. God is not, you know, this is a, disp we're still in the dispensation of grace. God is here to, to save and to heal and to, and to restore. I anything that kills and steals and destroys is of the devil. Uh, whatever 
Jesus came to give life, those life-giving things are from God. And until the, the wrath of God and the judgment of God is poured out in the book of Revelation, then we can, pretty, we, we can be, be safe to say that God is not out killing people, judging people, that natural disasters are not acts of God. All right, so then uh, verse 4, the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water and they became blood. So first the sea became blood. I guess the oceans of the world became blood and all the sea creatures died. Then the rivers and springs became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you've judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is their just due. So finally now, in, in the history of, of the church, or, or since the New Testament began, people are getting what they deserve. Man, I love the dispensation we live in, because I can preach unequivocally. When you believe God and you accept what Jesus did for you, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you believe for. Well, that's going to change. There's coming a point in time where that's going to reverse and people are going to get what they deserve. And uh, that's why I don't believe the tribulation is for us because we're never going to get that. Uh, Jesus set us free from having to get what we deserve in life. And uh, these people are getting what they deserve. Verse 7, And I heard another angel from the altar, or another from the altar, saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. So there's nothing that God's going to do that's not true or righteous. He's going to be justified in all of these things. Then in verse 8, The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blaspheme the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. And so, you know, that's just a, a great example there of, of, of rebellious humanity. And I believe God's doing some of this so that it goes on record forever and ever and ever throughout eternity that He used mercy and grace. He used revival and healing. He's used signs and wonders. He's used judgment and, and wrath and punishment. And the result of these people through all of this Listen, this is just th three and a half years into the tribulation. Some of these people are alive right now. They may all be alive right now. And, and there's gospel preaching going out all over the world right now. Through This is the information age. Never had People have never had more access to the gospel in more languages, in more writings than they have today. And yet people are... People don't accept it. They're not accepting mercy. They're not accepting grace. They're not accepting God's miraculous power that heals and delivers. The tribulation is going to begin. The wrath of God is going to be poured out. They're not going to be turned by that. They're going to see these things. Man, oh man, if I had made it to this fourth bowl and, 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 and His wrath was poured out on the sun and it scorched people with fire, I wouldn't blaspheme at that point. I mean, I, I wouldn't be cursing God. But, you know, we're not like everyone else. People have their own free will. I'm just amazed at how stubborn people... At some point, do you not just give up and say, Okay, God, you win. I, I'm just amazed that at this point in time that they would blaspheme God. I'm telling you, there are people that are just unwinnable. They're unreachable. No matter what God does... He cannot reach them. And there is going to come a point in time, and we'll talk about it with the new heavens and the new earth and, and, the, and the great white throne judgment. There's coming a time when God can't let these rebels, these sinful, you know, um, free will beings, roam the universe without boundaries. It, it just, he can't do that uh, because He wants to make it right and righteous and holy and pure. Sin literally has ruined this creation and it cost Jesus everything to buy it back. When it's restored, it's going to be populated by people that accept His plan, that accept His answer, that accept His goodness and His righteousness. And those that refuse, because right here they are, 
those that refuse under any circumstance to accept God as God and God's solution and God's morals and God's righteousness are going to have to be put in, in, in a place of seclusion because the same rebels uh, that ruined this creation would ruin that one. And that's just not going to happen again. Jesus is not going to have to die again to redeem another world from another sinner. That's just not going to happen again. So you can see how, how God is forced. And, and, and even though 2,000 years of mercy and seven years of, of judgment, He's going to be forced to put these people in a, in, in a prison, in a form of prison. And because people are eternal beings, they're not going to be annihilated. They're not going to cease to exist. It must be uh, an eternal uh, sentence. It has to be. They, they can't be let out for good behavior or they can't be let out. I mean, there is no good behavior. They've made their choice. So it's going to be an eternal sentence. And, and that it breaks your heart. But the truth of the matter is, folks, if, if God didn't do it this way, you and I wouldn't have a chance to accept Him. We wouldn't have had a chance to know Him. We wouldn't have a chance to live forever and ever in the family of God. And so uh, this is one of the consequences. You give people a free will, you got to give them a free choice. And I cannot imagine people making this choice, but you can see it right here. The men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give Him glory. It, it, that's the, really, that's going to be the saddest part. The fact that you and I are having to live through some uh, discomfort, the fact that we are living in a world that's losing its footing and declining in every way, the fact that we're living in a world that's, that's completely in upheaval politically, in nature, uh, and socially, we're seeing everything decay. That's nothing compared to the people who are eternally rebellious uh, to the person of God and to Jesus Christ. Um, you know, in that sense, we've are, we already have it made. Our future is secure. We have nothing to fear. Jesus, we are the apple of His eye. He went to prepare a place for us. And if he went to a prepared place, he's going to come back and get us so that we can be where he is. And he's not going to let us experience the wrath of God under any circumstances. You say, well, I believe we're going through the tribulation. That's fine, but you're not going to experience judgment and wrath on your life because Jesus did that for us. So however you can justify the fact that you'll go through the tribulation without without being judged, uh, it, that's not going to happen. Judgment went, came upon Him, so it doesn't come upon us. Then, verse 12, the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So what this is setting up is the Battle of Armageddon. This, uh, the Euphrates River is going to be dried so that all these armies can march into this valley unimpeded uh, because it's going to end in the Battle of Armageddon, which is another proof. I don't want to give away the, the, the future here but because we're getting to that. But, but listen, the Battle of Armageddon in itself, after, after the world goes through all of this judgment and wrath, they're going to decide, you know what? Let's form an army and let's go defeat God. Man, I mean, that's just detached from reality. So what's God supposed to do with these people? That They don't want Him under any circumstance. And so they're going to literally, after all this, blaspheme God, curse God, and then try to kill God. You know, good luck with that. I'm glad I'm on God's side. Uh, really, you, by the time you get done reading this, you're like, I don't blame you, God. I mean, what else could you do? You have done everything you could do to reach these people. And, and at this point, th there's just no reaching them. And so, um, uh, verse 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So, the devil, the Antichrist, the false prophet are still in full force here. They're leading a rebellious army. They're still operating on the earth. For they are spirits of demons 
performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And, uh, you know, God doesn't have to, to, to uh, summon them to this, to this battlefield. They're doing it themselves. They're saying, hey, God, we want to meet you on the battlefield. We want to destroy you once and forever, once and for all. And in verse 16, and they, they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. And we know where this place is. It is an actual valley, and this battle is actually going to occur. I don't believe this is symbolic or allegorical whatsoever. This is an actual battle that will happen in an actual place that we know of, the valley of Megiddo. And, uh, and, and you know, the nations are lining up. Um, one of the signs, it hasn't happened yet, uh, but will be when the Euphrates River dries up. Uh, that's going to happen. And then this massive army is going to march against God. Goodness gracious. Uh, then in, in verse 17, the seventh vial, we want to finish this so we can go on to the next. To the, ne we're going, the next undeniable event is the uh, second coming. And so we're setting up for that, of course. So you, that's going to be an easy sell after you've watched two, three, shows on the tribulation. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. I, I guess he could say it this way. I'm, I'm finished. I, there's nothing more I can do for these people. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her cup of the wine and the fierceness of his wrath. Ba Babylon is the world system, political and economic, and it's, it's all going to fail. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the hail. After all that, they're going <laughs> to they're going to be upset over hail, and, and since the plague was exceedingly great, so it was a terrible hailstorm that killed people, and they're going to blaspheme God. Um, it goes on to talk about the, the the fall of Babylon, the world system, the fall of the harlot, the one world religion. These things are going to fail. Um, and God's just cleaning up, really. He's just cleaning up uh, after. 6,000 years of sin, uh, the, the world system is going to fail and they're going to mourn that and the great harlot, the one world religion uh, is going to fail. The Antichrist is going to demand worship and um, finally Revelation 16 uh, verses uh, 17 through 21. Let me just read this so we can complete this process. There was a great earthquake. The city was divided. Great hail fell upon men and uh, the islands fled away. So the, the, the seventh vial is going to finish with this, the greatest earthquake in the history of the world. And as I've said before, people see earthquakes and they think, well, you know, that's God or that's God. or that. No, this is God. It, it, it is going to be the greatest earthquake that's happened in the history of the world. The islands are going to flee away. Things are going to change catastrophically, drastically. Uh, 125 pound hailstones are going to fall out of heaven and crush people. It, it's going to be a sight. And this is leading up to the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, how these people are so determined to fight a God like this, I'll never know. But I mean, can you agree at this point? Let's just detach ourselves from the whole process. There's these people that that made it to this point and their reaction is give me my gun i want to kill jesus they belong in hell i mean how could you think otherwise they just don't belong on earth with sane uh, righteous people they are insanely angry and full of hate to the point of no return and uh, joe morris said this and we'll, we'll close this this section with this and we'll talk about the second coming the battle of armageddon in the next session but he said this, as bad as hell on earth is for seven years, that would be the tribulation. And we've completed all these 
horrible uh, outpourings, the seals and the trumpets and the vials, it's terrible. But as bad as it is, it's far better than living in hell eternally. These things that we've described sound horrific, but they are still much better than missing out on the presence of God eternally. And that's my thought exactly. Uh, God, at the end of the tribulation, has done everything He could possibly do to provide salvation for mankind. I don't know about you, but I read this and I think about life at large as a whole, and I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad God gave me a chance to be a living, breathing human being, an eternal being, a free will being. But I'm even more than that, I'm glad that He uh, helped me to get saved, that He brought the knowledge of the truth to me and I accepted it. I will never get over that. I will never get over the fact that I'm saved, that Jesus is my Lord, I'm going to heaven. I don't want to be identified with anyone else. I don't want anyone else's favor. I don't want to court anyone else. I don't want anyone else's approval. I am so glad that I'm born again. I'm in the kingdom of God. Man, if you're not, get saved. Go to my website and read the Prepare to Meet Your Maker article. Uh, download that uh, for your own personal use and pray that prayer and become a Christian uh, because there's no future for anyone else and that's really the truth. The only future worth living is in Christ and uh, it's available to every single human being on earth right now. Make Jesus Lord. If uh, you like this teaching or maybe you didn't, <laughs> maybe you're going to have a hard time sleeping tonight. You know what? Call a helpline. I won't answer but you can talk to someone there. Just call them and say, hey, he scared the fire out of me. I, uh, I just need to talk. Just call. We'd love to talk to you, pray with you, and uh, make sure that you've got everything in order in your life. That's what it's for. Uh, thank you for being there. We love our audience. Consider supporting this ministry. I can't do it without you. Sometimes I wish I could, but, you know, in the end, we'll be able to say before God, we did this together. We took the Good News program, and we put it out on every available outlet, and we did it together. And I think that's a great uh, testimony, and we'll be rewarded for that. So if you haven't given, consider being a partner or giving a one-time gift. Text to give. Call the helpline. Uh, we need a hundred new partners. And it could be that the Lord's speaking to you to be one of those special people. If so, please call us today and get your partnership going. We'll send you a free gift and a packet and a letter and we'll keep in contact with you. We love our partners. So uh, contact us today. I'd love to hear from you. We're going to go on with the second coming. Man, it's going to get better and better from here on out. Until then, remember this. The good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. End time teaching has always been controversial. In this series, you'll learn the seven end time events that will happen according to Scripture and why for Christians, the good news just keeps getting better. Call our helpline at 918 749 7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Greg Fritz Ministries wants to minister to you through prayer. Call our helpline at 918 749 7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time.